So this is just a short video on some experiences with the Eonon A13 series uh, Android head unit. Um, as a little bit of background, Eonon, uh, probably one of the better Chinese Android head unit manufacturers. They've been in business, I think, more than 15 years. Um, they produce a variety of head units, uh, one or two Linux units, the majority running Android. And they particularly specialize in producing head units with vehicle specific fascias to fit in, for example, VW, BMW, uh, Mazda, so on. Um, the A13 is a unit released in uh, 2024. It uses the Rock Chip uh, 3562 four core processor uh, and it has two gigabytes of uh, DDR3 RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. Uh, it's very much a budget unit. This unit I bought on uh, eBay in the UK and with some discount coupons and so forth, I actually paid less than 90 pounds for it. So that's a uh, stunning value really. Um, the same basic motherboard is used in a variety of other units. So any unit you buy from Eonon with A13 in the part number is going to use the, the same basic motherboard with the rock chip processor. Um, like most of these Chinese Android head unit suppliers, uh, there's usually a, another manufacturer behind the brand. So in this particular case, Eonon will buy in these motherboards uh, from, a, from another company. And in fact, the same motherboard, for example, appears in the Max Speeding Rods uh, DQ36. That has uh, exactly the same motherboard in it. Um, Eonon then fit it with a variety of different faciers and screens. So this is the UA13, which is a true double DIN unit, it's 180 millimeters wide, 100 millimeters high. So it's a proper uh, double DIN. It's not an oversized one as some of the Chinese Android units are. The same motherboard is mated up to a 10 inch screen. That's the UA13 Plus. And then there are a whole range of vehicle specific uh, units that they sell with faciers and screens to fit a range of vehicles. But if it's got A13 in the part number, then it's using this motherboard. Um, so I've, I've had this unit on test for about uh, six weeks. It's pretty good if you want a basic unit to view uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, then it's, it's actually very good. Um, and that's all that a lot of people want. They just want to be able to use uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The power output is given as four times 45 watts. I suspect that is peak music power output. The true RMS output, I guess, is probably a lot lower, probably less than 10 watts RMS per channel. But the sound quality is not bad. Um, the FM radio reception is pretty good. You can, using a uh, a USB module, you can get it to receive DAB plus. That's an optional extra. Um, it has good built-in GPS. It comes with a GPS antenna. It locks onto lots of satellites very quickly, so the GPS performance is good. Um, I like very much the fact that this particular one, the UA13 doubled in, comes with a, a rotary volume control on the front there. If you don't have steering wheel controls, then a rotary volume control is, is a, a real bonus. There's nothing worse than having to use touchscreen controls, when you, especially when you're driving in traffic. Um, the touchscreen's reasonably responsive. There's occasionally at the edges, uh, the response is rather poor. It connects to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto very well. It connects wirelessly or wired. Um, the wireless connection seems to be reliable in probably 50 or more um, connections. It only probably failed twice, so it, it, it's pretty good. It features a USB-C connector on the front, 
and that is for um, uh, that's for charging only. Okay, there's no data connection. There's a standard USB connector for um, data exchange. But overall, a very good unit. Um, the one big downside, like a lot of these Chinese Android units, is the microphone performance, uh, particularly when you're on, on a, a, a phone call. Uh, very often, the other party struggles to decipher what you're saying. Uh, especially when you're driving at speed. And that is really down to essentially a poor poor audio preamp stage in the in the head unit and also a lack of any um, noise cancellation or noise filtering. So it, it's basically rather poor design. Now, the unit does come with a um, front panel mic here and it also has uh, a plug-in external mic. The problem is that both of those are connected together so when you plug in the external mic the front panel mic stays connected. Now within the factory settings there is the option to adjust the microphone gain and there's also a setting for you to be able to turn on or off the internal and external mic. However those do not work, those settings do nothing so if you go into factory settings, you change the mic gain, it has no effect on the performance. Similarly, you can select the internal mic or the external mic, it doesn't matter. I verified that in hardware, they are connected together. So um, it, there's no point in playing with the factory settings. You're stuck with both. One way to improve performance is to disable the front panel mic in hardware. In other words, to physically cut the wire to the front panel mic and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay so here's the uh, the head unit now the front panel um, is just held on by two screws at each side so uh, I've removed three of the screws I'm just now going to remove the fourth and put the screw to the side and uh, the front panel just just pulls away and we're left with uh, the motherboard at the back there, uh, ribbon cables down to the screen, and on the left-hand side there, you can see um, a small subboard which has the rotary volume control, and it has a uh, connection to the front panel mic. So we have a subboard here. Uh, which has the rotary volume control on it and uh, connectors off to the motherboard. The wires to the uh, microphone are actually this red and black wire right at the top. So the microphone is mounted to the front panel and then the red and black wires go to two solder pad pads on the subboard there. And in fact, all I've done is just to snip. Uh, the red wire, which is the microphone signal wire, um, and just move it away from the from the solder pad. And if I wanted to reconnect it, it's an easy matter, just strip the wire slightly and solder it back on there. And so doing that disconnects the uh, front panel mic, and then we can just use the uh, external mic. Now the unit comes with a variety of wiring harnesses and uh, in particular it comes with uh, a wiring harness that contains RCA connectors for, uh, we've got front camera input, we've got subwoofer, so, so on and so forth. And we do have um, an external microphone connector which is this, uh, this black connector here. So it will take an external microphone. Now the, the unit is supplied with uh, an external mic, a simple capacitor mic, and it uses a three pole uh, TRS connector. Um, and the three pole TRS connector is interchangeable with a two pole TS type connector. So you can use a microphone that's either got a three pole connector like this or has 
a two pole connector like that. Um, I check the external microphone output and it gives an energizing voltage of about three volts, which is enough for most capacitor microphones. With a mic connected up, that drops to about 2.7. Uh, most electric condenser mics are happy with a voltage anywhere from a 2 to about 10 volts. So uh, there is enough voltage there to energise a uh, typical electric condenser mic. Now the, the microphone that's supplied with the head unit, the in-on mic, um, is actually not bad. Um, tried it out and the sound quality is, is pretty reasonable as far as these Chinese head units go. Um, I also tried it out with a, one of these little, um, these little microphones that look like, they look like kind of a little computer mouse um, and they come with a, a sort of holder and people tend to stick them on top of the steering column and so forth. Um, they claim to be noise cancelling, this is uh, one that's supplied by Extrons, so they have uh, sort of holes in the front and then there's a port at the back there and supposed to be some noise cancelling takes place. I tried this one and to be honest the results were rather poor. So there was a fair amount of electrical noise and it wasn't as good as the uh, one that was supplied with the head unit itself. Um, the third mic I tried was a uh, Callowen uh, Lavalier mic. This is made for more made for uh, vlogging and so forth. It's a lapel mic. Um, it actually comes as standard with a, a TRRS connector, which you can't plug directly into this uh, external microphone adapter on the head unit. So I had to insert a TRRS to TRS adapter, and then that will plug into the into the head unit. Um, I got two of these for about £15 on Amazon UK, so they're, they're not expensive. And actually the quality of this was pretty good. It was better than the standard uh, microphone that's supplied with a head unit. So uh, yeah, I was, quite, I was quite pleased with the performance of this. So if you're concerned about um, uh, sound quality when you're in a phone call, then yes, disconnect the front panel mic and use an external mic. Um, but to be quite frank, all of these Chinese head units at the cheaper end of the market, anything under about sort of 250 pounds, tends to have rather poor uh, audio input performance, rather poor performance on the mic. Um, and you're either better getting a more expensive um, head unit, I think the the uh, the Doodoo 7 um, is claimed to use digital signal processing on the microphone input. That should give you better call quality. Or you really need to go and buy one of the big brands, a Pioneer or a Kenwood, uh, where they've used some noise cancelling technology and you're likely to get uh, better better audio performance in phone calls. So if you're the kind of person that makes a lot of phone calls when you're driving, these very cheap Chinese head units probably aren't for you, even if you um, upgrade the mic, still uh, less than ideal performance. Anyway, I hope that's useful. Just a, a short summary of my experience with this uh, unit. I think for the, the money, it's great. Uh, particularly if you're running around in, a, in an older vehicle and you don't want to spend a fortune on, on a head unit. Um, it comes with uh, ISO wiring adapter, uh, GPS an antenna, um, and overall its, its performance is, is pretty good. It's not a crashy unit, it wasn't crashing and hanging. Um, everything works as it should, and certainly if you confine yourself to something to look at uh, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay on, then it, it probably meets that need uh, without, without being particularly expensive.